Yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome. This is the OMC EXP project. It's about $90 million worth of work that we're doing in support of the Tempe Streetcar Line addition and additional vehicles that will come to support the different alignments of the current Valley Metro program. We're receiving more vehicles, so we had to make the yard bigger. So what you're going to see here today is you're going to see expansion of some storage tracks, expansion of cleaning facilities to clean the trains, expansion of the maintenance of equipment facility, and the expansion of the maintenance of way facility. There's also some electrical items that are doing support for this program called the Traction Power Substation, which we're building an additional one. You're going to see that today. So let's first take a look at the mechanically stabilized earth wall that we've produced to be able to expand the yard to bring the, the grade of the elevation up. This is over here. On the back slope of this, as we're using rock and grout to stabilize the slope as well. The mechanically stabilized earth wall, which is brought in sections, stitched together, has supporting straps that go back into the embankment are present here. We're still in the process of installing the fence that goes on top of here for security purposes to keep people from falling over the wall, of course. You can see that there's switches that have been installed. The switches are used to be able to turn the train from one track to the other by simply throwing the lever of the switch. So this would be called a mechanical switch because this is uh, not automated, it's not an electrical system, it's just mechanically thrown. So one of the challenges for this project is that we have to match existing. So you can see some, some uh, light poles and OCS poles are gonna match the existing poles as well. So we have to look at the same manufacturers, try to find the same equipment that's out there. These vehicles that you see in front of you, this is brand new. These are from Siemens, they're made in California, and we've been receiving about one of them a month. So this is some of the new fleet that's gonna be out on the alignment. They're in the process of testing and making sure that these vehicles are sound and safe before they put them into active service. So this is an example of restraining rail. When a LRV goes around a tight curve, we had done, we put the restraining rail in this area because we're adjacent to a wall and we don't want the vehicle to leave the track. So this helps to keep the LRV within the track and on the track. So this is, you'll see this double type of rail especially in a yard area and in a curve. So into the site, we have water that comes from the city of Phoenix. They'll discharge into this area. So they had to make a U-channel expansion. There was an outfall against where the current slope is and we had to expand out with this structure. It took approximately two and a half months to complete this small project within the project. And now you can start to see all of the grouted riprap in the area to protect when you do have large discharges of water in the area. And they're still using a pipe to flow the water downhill as they do more construction on the back slope as well. But eventually this small earthen dam will come out and the water will fl uh, freely flow through here. So you can see the large anchor bolts that are required 
for the OCS Foundation. These go quite deep into the ground. Large diameter galvanized steel bolts and nuts. And they hold a very sturdy pole that all the head span hardware will be attached to in order to hold the OCS. These will also be the same that you see along the normal alignment. Starting with these machines going from closest to me to furthest away. Uh, so this is a regulator. This does all the cleaning of the ballast. Uh, so it will essentially come through. It has side wings, it has a front plow, and it has a broom on the back. It'll come through. Uh, when we initially build this, we fill this rock up to top of rail, which you'll see out there when you take some more video. This machine comes through and plows the rock away. It has its side wings, so it'll come down and it'll, it'll grade this ballast as well. It comes through on its final thing with its broom and it actually makes the ties clean, gets all the res uh, residual rock off the thing. Big concern about this machine is silica, right? It creates a lot of dust. In an environment like this, we can't have dust going uh, Fallon Valley Metro or Fallon ourselves. So safety's first. So when we run this machine, we got a water truck that follows it, sprays water and keeps the dust down. Uh, real bad silica. Do you guys want to walk this way and get closer? This machine is very versatile. So essentially what this machine does is get these long rails into place. Uh, these rails in particular are around 800 feet long. This machine will drag it into place and thread it onto the ties. Uh, it is a high rail equipment so it could either use its rubber tires or it could actually uh, be on the high rail so it'll run on track. Right now it's in the position to help the surfacing crew. So if you look behind it, it's actually hooked up to a hopper. That hopper is a ballast hopper. Um, we could fit about a, a 15 tons of rock in it. This machine will pull it, it'll dump the rock where it needs to be, and then the regulator will clean up that rock uh, to fill any voids. Come out from outside, so these will consolidate that rock under the tie. They vibrate, so this track is set to the desired elevation. Without that rock consolidated, it won't pull. We always have to look at different phases of construction. Construction phasing is quite important to be able to build a project. And those trailers will be placed adjacent to their office now. So this is a challenge that you need to think about when you're doing phasing of construction. If you're taking a space from an active facility, you have to provide temporary spaces for those workers to work out of. So we're moving people out of offices into some trailers for a few months, renovating their office, putting them back in their office and expanding their space because we're taking on more responsibility. There's more alignment, there's more LRVs that need to be serviced and there's more people and jobs associated to that. So in this space, this is a 
shop area that we're gonna use to be able to clean off and work on some of the equipment that we use in the maintenance of way. These vehicles and equipment go along the alignment. So in this space, this is part of the expansion of the warehouse that we currently have. There's a lot of material that Valley Metro needs to store in order to respond quickly to keep the alignment flowing, to not lose revenue service. So this space is associated with that. There's a small office here in the corner. There's gonna be three phases of the expansion of this facility. This is the first phase. There's going to be a north expansion on phase three and the offices are phase two. They'll be gutted, expanded, we'll place people into the trailers and they'll put them back in their offices over the coming months. January, this section of the project began. So there was, well, there was a little piece of concrete that we're standing on that was currently there. And then there was another temporary lean-to shed they had built and they had to move everything out, come in, set the foundation, do some utility work in here, and then everything came up from the ground. Keeping workers in a comfortable environment in order to do their work is quite important, especially in Arizona. Swap coolers don't always work, so we're using a chiller and a traditional HVAC system to be able to get the cooling necessary to allow people to, to function and do their job. Weather does impact the timing of the project and the trades in the summertime will come in sometimes three o'clock in the morning and begin their work and try to be done before one. It gets quite hot. So as a project manager, there's a lot of duties that you have to do to make sure that you're coordinating with the city of Phoenix, city of Phoenix fire department, police department. So we're all working together to make a very safe uh, system and also a, a system that's gonna function for everybody. And in case of emergency, there's always a way to respond to that. We have little sandboxes and little release mechanisms that I'll sprinkle a tiny amount of sand on some of the hills or near the station in order for the train to stop. You don't want the train to slide and you don't want the train to spin when they take off. So we use special sand that goes in to the little sandboxes underneath the train and these machines here are used to fill them. Well, good afternoon. My name is Kenneth DeBow, Track Allocation Program and Administrator for Valley Metro Rail. Uh, here we are in the Operations Control Center, and I'll just be giving you guys a very brief tour of what we do here in the Valley Metro Operations Control Center. Since the camera is facing this way, I'll just highlight behind us is the DCC. Uh, that is our Dispatch Communication Center. This group of individuals they are responsible for all uh, security related events that take place on the Valley Metro light rail system. Most unique about the DCC area is the use of closed circuit television cameras that are throughout the system. So this group, they have access to cameras on every single station, uh, cameras at intersections, which we work with our city partners, city of Phoenix, city of Tempe, and also the city of Mesa to provide us with information and also um, a, a camera viewpoint of everything that's taking place along our system. If we could slowly turn and look towards the operations control center. This is the operations control uh, board on the top. What we're looking at is the supervisory control and data acquisition system. So from utilizing this system on the board, the controllers, the gentlemen that we see seated here below, control all rail activity on the Valley Metro rail system. So 
By control, what I mean is they're able to energize the system, de-energize the light rail system, communicate directly with the trains on the main line, and also move trains from one track to another. If you'll follow me, since this is a very uh, safety sensitive area, I will be putting a mask back on. Each workstation that we see here has the exact configuration that's visible from the board down here on their three monitors and they're able to control unique parts of the system from this particular workstation. We walk a little closer and take a look at the board. This is the Guthrie interlocking. This is Gilbert and Main. This is our east terminus for our light rail system. At the top left corner, you want to walk on down with me. This is our northwest terminus, 19th Avenue and Dunlap. If you look here, the system, the SCADA system is letting us know that we have a track circuit issue in the 19th Avenue and Dunlop corridor. So the OCC controllers are working diligently to resolve that issue, um, likely by sending a physical person to a signal building out in the field to further troubleshoot what the problem may be. While they're working on that, we can come back over to, we'll come over here to Longmore. So this is our old terminus, Sycamore and Main. What these are, are track circuits. So at this location, we have the ability to move a train from our westbound track into a pocket track and also onto our eastbound track if absolutely necessary. The way that the operations controllers control train movement in this area is we can identify a train via its icon here. So a green icon indicates that the train is operating on schedule. You may notice this is turning red here at the bottom. That is a digital track circuit. So that's how we are able to identify where the trains are located at all times. Now here, where train number 12 is currently located, you look a little closer, we have a bright red circuit. So this is an actual track circuit, the 5T circuit. So this will indicate that this is occupied and that there's a train on that circuit. While this is illuminated, the operation controllers will never be able to move a train across from track number one to track number two. So that's kind of the purpose of a track circuit. Now you may wonder, how does all this work? To power these, in, these systems uh, within these doors, which we don't have access to today, are server rooms. Beneath the floor, we also have additional servers, and in the basement of this building, there are additional servers. So everything that you see here in this building is also backed up via our backup OCC, which is at a remote, undisclosed location in the event that we ever had to activate our backup operations plans. Thank you for taking this tour with us of the Valley Metro Operations Control Center. Have a good day. We handle uh, the app uh, Alert VM. I just got a bus complaint, so I'm going to have to answer this person why people are wearing masks uh, on the buses, etc. So I'll answer that person here in a minute. Um, we also deal with Twitter. We send out tweets uh, during major incidents, and we also notify the stakeholders that uh, are our bosses who have a piece of the light rail for both Phoenix, Tempe, and Mesa. Uh, I also write blogs of uh, issues that are happening on the rail system. And then last but not least, I watch cameras and I make, make platform announcements over here. If somebody is uh, being banned on the platform, I can uh, tell them at Mill and Third to uh, please refrain from them. Or the whole system, if we have a major uh, slowdown, I can notify, I can talk to all of you. And what you'll notice about this area, you can follow me, is that we have little jib cranes set up to be able to move these heavy parts around. Constantly working on motors, servicing the equipment, brake systems, propulsion systems are all being worked on. 
Overhead, you have a large 10 ton bridge crane. This crane spans the entire of this space and it will extend to the east. We're going to knock that wall out, move all those doors, and that crane will continue into the new building. Here, uh, there's mezzanines up here that allow us to access the top of the train. We safe off the area before they go up there. So we'll turn off the electrical system. Once you get on top of the train, there's actually a plug to plug the train into what they call hotel power. And that hotel power is run through a, a transformer that's in this building in a substation that is able to provide enough juice for us to turn on the train, turn on the air conditioning systems, check things underneath. And also, if we come a little bit forward, I'm gonna show you that we're able to get underneath the trains. Here, you can see that there's some embedded yellow boxes in the floor. This is actually a lift. These can pick the trains up off the ground. You can walk underneath them. So in here, there's hydraulics. And underneath here, there's a big hydraulic system in order to power the lifts. They're able to pick the train off the ground. Propulsion is used from the, the first truck and the third truck. The center truck is only used for braking. Well, you're gonna get a treat. So this is the new LRV that we have. And this one just came in. It's being tested. It's not fully assembled yet. If you want to take a sneak peek inside, I'm, I'm sure you can. There used to be old showers in this area, all been ripped out. They're gonna replace this with some benches. They're gonna relocate the showers to the, to the north side of this room. And we're just expanding the capability because we're gonna have more staff come in. Okay. More, absolutely. So this is actually, some of the work is gonna remain in place. So some of the benches and the lockers will remain in place and the other ones will be expanded upon. We wanna use the most cost-effective way to renovate the space. You don't wanna rip everything out, save what we can and replace everything else. Outside of the building, you can see the excavator that's working. And what they're doing is they're digging a big pit to place a tank. This is part of the drainage system. We gotta make sure that we're treating all the material that comes out of the drains that are, are inside the shop. So any fluids that would fall into the sump or the pits in the shop itself are going to a drain. That material will be collected into a tank and that will be treated correctly. So it's not going into the system at all. This is expanding our capabilities. They'll come in, they'll check in with the desk, get their assignments for the day. They'll come over here, maybe do a briefing on what they need to do. There's tables set up when they need to do their breaks and their lunch. Men's and women's restrooms, locker rooms, be able to store their equipment that they need before they go on to the alignment. Along this wall will be a large kitchenette, refrigerators, sink, some microwaves, some vending machines. There'll be a small little lounge area for them to wait here. And these five bays will accommodate LRVs that come in here. It will be servicing the streetcar line as well as some of the other Kinkashero and Siemens vehicles. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming out to see the Operations Maintenance Center expansion project. Very excited about delivering this for Arizona, especially Phoenix, Tempe, and all the surrounding communities here. Mesa has been a new part of this group. So Valley Metro is doing quite a few programs, expanding the South Central Corridor, and also they're working on the Northwest Extension too. And we're bringing in new vehicles here that you're gonna be able to see in this video and wanted to just thank you for coming out to look at what the maintenance of equipment and maintenance operations project is all about. Lots of different trades working on a project like this. Electricians, plumbers, 
carpenters, concrete workers, people doing engineering testing like geotechnical testing, different entities building walls, structural engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, double E's, electrical engineers, all fold together to be able to create something like this. A little bit of architecture too, don't want to forget them, but uh, just, I think that being on a big project like this can really show you the diversity of the different roles that you can go after for a career, a job, and there's a lot to be done in a big project like this. So thank you.